Welcome to the Woodstock Theological Center's Reflection Series podcast. This Reflections episode features Senior Research Fellow Ilya Delio, OSF, discussing the role of Jesuit Teilhard de Jardin and his thoughts on the science of evolution. No one knows really what to do with him. I guess, you know, for me, the, the, the term that best describes him is the bottom one, a mutational man. That term was uh, coined by Ewart Cousins, to describe both uh, Raymond Panikar and Teilhard de Jardin. By mutational man, Cousins really meant that Teilhard lived between two axial periods of consciousness. He lived between the first axial period, uh, that period of consciousness within world religions emerged and the human person as we know it now emerged, and the second axial period, which is the period of global consciousness or interplanetary consciousness, you might say. And Teilhard straddles, you might say, he he is a bridge person in this way. Um, He was an evolutionary thinker. And by evolution, here, uh, you know, I think to understand Teilhard, it's not, I think, to interpret him in a Darwinian sense, but in the Bergsonian sense. For him, evolution is a descriptive process of the whole of life as life, you might say, unfolds toward more complexified life forms. Uh, So the law that best describes his thinking is convergence complexity. Um, uh, The whole unfolding of this uh, cosmic uh, life is one that moves from uh, simple to more complex, and more complex means greater unity. And so he looks at this unfolding from matter to life to mind to spirit. We, of course, are, oh, I should just uh, note here that for Teilhard, the whole of evolution really can be summed up in the primacy of consciousness. He did not see that consciousness enters into evolution at some point in time. Rather, from the Big Bang, you know, whatever that Big Bang is, that the beginning, so to speak, of the universe, consciousness is present. And consciousness, you might say, is what evolution is about. It's the, the unfolding, the converging, the complexification is the rising of consciousness in evolution. So um, he does give a primacy to consciousness. So we here, we humans, are, you might say, the outflow of what we know today to be about a 13.7 billion year old uh, universe story. Uh, it's, It's rather a fantastic story. We are emerge, we emerge from it, we can self, we can reflect on it, but we are, you might say, uh, continue to be in it. <laughs> we continue to be in evolution. So Teilhard uh, described the, ev- uh, the human person as evolution made conscious of itself, uh, a phrase he got, he picked up from uh, Julian Huxley. Now, I guess it's within this context of evolution that we are to understand what Christianity is for him and the meaning of Christian life. Because evolution is, you might say, governed by a dynamic spirit, he spoke of cosmogenesis or the birthing. The whole universe is still being unfolded by evolution. Uh, Biogenesis, life still continues to be created but the whole, he said, is really Christogenesis. And here, this is where I do find people still, if it's a difficulty to wrap our minds, so what, what is Teilhard's Christogenesis? Uh, and uh, as I understand it, um, it again begins, you know, uh, let me just put it this way. Teilhard uh, saw the whole uh, significance of Christ from the beginning of this evolutionary universe. In other words, from Big Bang on, Christ is present and unfolding. So he held to what we call the primacy of Christ. In other words, the universe is about the Christ. Christ is not about the universe. Uh, Christ is first uh, in God's intention to love and therefore to create. So the unfolding of consciousness, the unfolding of evolutionary cosmos is the unfolding, you might say, of Christ that comes to explicit consciousness uh, in the person of Jesus. Uh, So Jesus, you might say, is that new big bang, that explosion of God, 
uh, in concrete historical reality. But the Christ continues to, uh, to be complexified in evolution toward omega, or the fullness of all things in love. So it's an ongoing process that continues in and through the human person. Now, keeping that in mind, I guess if I look at Teilhard and I say, well, what is his value for today? Uh, and he has many. So I just want to link what, um, what Teilhard can offer to some of our work on transhumanism. First thing is, Teilhard was not a, a, a flight of fancy. You know, I think he did not have his head so much in the clouds that he was not aware of what was happening uh, in his historical milieu. While you know, he lived through two world wars, um, he lived through the rise of the cyclotron, nuclear power, the thing that concerned him most was actually the expanding population. And he looked at the rise in population, which in his day was about 2.6 billion or so. Today it's about 6.9 billion, and it's estimated by 2050 it will be about 10.5 billion. And he wondered, how can we continue with a, a continuous growth in population in um, an earth of finite resources? And so he looked at the conditions of what he called external compression. Systems um, are going to begin to collapse, he basically said. And at the same time, science is rising and we're lured by the progress of science. And uh, you know, what he said is that we're being, in a sense, pulled away from faith in God and a zest for life, and we're being lured by scientific progress. And he said if we continue in that path, if, in other words, if we make science the, the new religion, so to speak, he said we're a species doomed to extinction. So he looked at the rise in an expanding population, he looked at the rise of science, and he said, we are on the verge, or this is a catalyst for evolution, toward more being. And I do think what Teilhard was saying, you know, his insights are very on target, I think, for today. When we look at what's happening uh, across various systems, political, economic, social, religious systems, uh, I think what Teilhard was noting is that we are on the verge of, uh, of an evolutionary cusp. He wrote in his Phenomenon of Man, the success of humanity's evolution will not be determined by survival of the fittest, but by our own capacity to converge and unify. And that's what Teilhard notes. It's not about um, you know, who's going to be the best, you know, the most intelligent or the strongest, but can we come together for the sake of the whole? Thank you for joining us for the Woodstock Theological Center's Reflection Series podcast. If you want to learn more, visit woodstock.georgetown.edu.